Welcome back to the channel, my loyal subjects. Thanks everybody for watching who does watch these and who's liked and subscribed and all that stuff. Uh, but today, this episode, we are going to be painting. But before we can paint, we have to prep. So we got to get all the stickers off, try to get all the rust we can possibly get off. off. This one's not too rusted, so it's not that big of a deal, but... All of them are gonna have rust in the corners because when they stack these things, the paint gets busted off and there's they're all gonna have numbers generally. Depending on the condition of your container, it's gonna take longer or shorter to get all this stuff off, but just a grinder with a wire wheel works pretty well. Um, I didn't have any luck with some of like the rust removers or navel jellies or anything like that. And they work, but it, it just, the time frame is not very good and it takes forever to kind of hit all of the spots if you were to hit all the spots so if that's an option for you that's something you want to do go ahead and do it but just a grinder with a good old-fashioned wire wheel knotted end wire wheel works really good at getting all these stickers and all of the spots and all the rust and all that stuff off uh word to the wise though it will kind of indent into the original paint and so when you paint over it with your new paint you will be able to see it when you get up on it but the shipping container um, it's got issues with it as far as dents and you know other little improprieties and things like that but it's just character it's like a attractive woman's got a mole who cares it's just build a little character it's how you know she's not fake um, but before I get too sidetracked on that then you want to power wash all the little dust and debris and everything off so I was uh, I did all of that one day of getting the stickers off came back the next day with the power washer and got all the stuff off. Um, I didn't do that. That wasn't my plan. It was just a time constraint thing. So it is what it is. Uh, if you can do all this in one day with a helper or something, that's probably ideal. But uh, hey, I'm just a one man show. Your local neighborhood rank amateur. So that's it. Um, I really don't like power washing. You just get soaked. But oh well, it's hotter than. Hades out there, so getting hit by water is the, not the worst thing in the world. Uh, make sure your windows are closed, though, um, so you don't get water all up in there. And it kind of tests all the seals and stuff that you've put in thus far. Uh, but the paint that we're going to use is not anything special, so it's not some custom paint from some custom paint store. Before I get too far into the paint, I just want to tell you how much I hate taping off things especially using plastic because it's unwieldy and I'm not very good at it and I can't stand taping things off but I had to but anyway back to the paint all I'm going to use here is Lowe's Valspar outdoor or exterior paint their Duramax paint uh, paint plus primer um, there's really good paint and primers that are already on your shipping container so as long as your paint you know you get all the little spots that are discolored or maybe there's you know rust from where it's been nicked or something as long as you get all of that stuff in good shape you don't need a primer um, obviously you want to get a good paint I think the paint that I went with is like $55 a gallon yeah there you go 54.98 I needed three gallons so for 160 ish bucks $165 plus tax I've got a paint job on this and some sweat equity. Um, one thing to note I noticed on the paint is that it says you can't use an air sprayer. So no air compressor sprayer system with this paint. I don't know if it actually would hold up, but the sprayer I'm using is an electric sprayer. Um, I've had it for a few years, painted my house, actual physical house with it. Obviously, I'm painting this with it. The only downside of it is it's uh, it's electric, so you have to have an extension cord, which you can see on the ground there. And I'll link to both the extension cord and the paint sprayer. But it's fairly inexpensive. It's real easy to use. But the downside is is when you fill up the paint bucket itself, it's right on it's in front of your hand that's holding it, so it gets a little unwieldy. Uh, it puts all the weight forward, and it's just kind of a pain you're basically gonna have to use two hands but other than that it's pretty easy to use it's very comfortable it's easy to clean up this paint cleans up with just warm water and soap which is another huge plus no mineral spirits no acetones no nothing like that so 
when I did have to clean this up and stop, not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. And it peels right off. It comes right off your hands, fingers, all of that stuff. So no big deal. Try not to get it on your clothes. I don't know how well it comes out of that, but I'm in clothes that I don't care about if they get all nasty. But the paint went on really well. Um, it covered really, really well. I did have to go back and hit a few spots here and there. But the other thing with this paint sprayer is you can dial in how much paint it's putting out and the uh, pattern. You, so you can widen or tighten the pattern if you want, however you want to do it. Um, I did notice that even when I got too much paint in a certain area, it's still laid out flat. So the paint is really, really good paint. As I sit here today, it's been painted for probably two weeks and I look at it every day. I don't notice any discoloration or anything, you know, chipping, peeling, rust coming through or anything like that. Went on real easy, real easy to work with. I like the color. Believe it or not, I did pick this color out by myself. The uh, wife had no say so in it, basically. I told her what I was doing, but she didn't get to choose. Uh, the color is called the tantalizing teal. So yeah, teal. We kind of want this thing to stick out, obviously, since it's going to be a vacation rental. We don't want it to just look like a normal house color or something like that. So I think we, I chose right. Um, the trim I'm going to do is going to be in sort of a bronze, bronzish, goldish color around the windows and door. Um, I think that'll go really, really well with it. Probably more towards a gold color than a bronze color. Um, if you have any ideas for the trim, you can drop it down in the comments and tell me, or, you know, send me a link to some color you think looks cool that'll go cool with it. Um, but I think that'll work out well. I can't say enough about how well the paint went on. And I had kind of, the sun on it, you really get the full effect of what it looks like. Um, basically the paint went on and that's the color you got it wasn't like it went on super dark and then lightened up quite a bit um the, what the difference you're seeing here is just the sun direct sun being on it versus it being in the shadows kind of before i debated whether or not to paint this with a brush and leave all of the door hardware in that brushed aluminum color I tried it with a brush, it was going on slow, it was super hot, so I said screw it and I'm going to paint the whole thing with the sprayer, which I did. Which I don't regret whatsoever because I didn't want to be out there in the heat forever. But, got it all painted up, got it looking good, still need to do that uh, end paneling there, trim on that side, but here's our finished product. If you guys like it, drop it in the comments. If you don't, drop that in the comments. Um, I'm always open to other people's opinions and their thoughts, but we have a painted 20-foot container home. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.